What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here within the deep heart of Nashville, Tennessee, doing a multi-vehicle media launch with Toyota. And guess what? We have this SUV that's actually creating some controversy. This is it. This is a 2023 Toyota Highlander. This one has the changes underneath the hood. But before we get to that, let's talk about what's going on here. The Highlander. That's been one of their main nameplates in their lineup for many, many years. Obviously, the smaller version would be the RAV4. The Highlander is that three-row midsize SUV. If you want to go bigger, they got you covered there with the Sequoia. Now, over the years, the Highlander has always had one particular thing, no matter what generation it was. The V6 naturally aspirated engine. Well, guess what? Toyota decided to throw overboard that V6 and replace it with a smaller engine. They're claiming you're gonna get lots of power, you're gonna get better fuel economy, and they're cutting down on the emissions. So what I wanna find out is, does the Highlander live up to the promises? And is it better with the four-cylinder turbocharged engine over the V6 Highlander Let's go ahead, let's dive into our new Cypress Green, new color for 2023, Cypress Green Highlander Limited and find out. Right off the bat, you're gonna look at and you're gonna say, well, Joe, it looks a lot just like my 2022 Highlander. And guess what, you're correct. But we're gonna quickly touch on some of the things that makes the Limited a good trim to get. Up front, you are getting LED headlights and I love the way that they worked the headlight housing. Little bit of chrome, the rest blacked out, you have your LED daytime running lamp, and I'm telling you right now, I have never been a big green color vehicle kind of guy, but I'm digging the Cypress Green. Nice metal flake, just like your great granddaddy's bowling ball that he won all those championships with. It's got the sparkle. We work our way down. In a world where fog lamps are disappearing, Toyota has the LED fog lamp for you. The one zonk I do have is I wish they would make this lower portion functional. Make it a corner air curtain. But just like on the RAV4 and their other vehicles, Corolla Cross, it's got that nice extension that really gives it some substance without looking too jelly bean. Now, as we come across the front, when you go limited trim, besides those great lights, you're going to get this specific grill. It's got gla gloss black with some chrome accents, a little bit of blingy bling bling, forward facing camera, I think it's a nice balance. It's not too overboard, like if they would have made the whole thing chrome. And then working your way down, you do have flat black in the center, which I think is smart since it's lower to the ground. This will take a better beating over time. You can see some of the Nashville bugs that have been smeared. Those are extra. Those do not come standard, especially this big guy that went splat all over the place. Now, when we get up onto the hood, same familiar hood, but what I want you to focus on is I want you to be mesmerized by that cypress green paint. And if you ever wondered, where does mesmerize or mesmerizing come from? It's actually from Franz Mesmer. But we'll talk about that in another video in another day. But the green just accentuates the body lines of the hood and coming around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? So on the limited trim, you're getting these hand polished. I've actually seen these get polished in the factories, hand polished wheels. Love the design, nice, clean, and really kind of sets off the Cypress Green. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, what is the size of this wheel? It's a 20-inch wheel. And when they came out with this wheel, this was the largest wheel ever put on any Highlander. But definitely, you're going to get some nice attention with that great glimmering shimmer to it. One thing I am going to zonk, though, is this right here. That's a big no-no. I expect it on a lower trim, but this should be, give me my Cypress Green, give me my Green's worth. I want Cypress Green all over this fender treatment, but you do get some flat black. It's not too crazy, but like I said, it would be nice if it was body colored. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about that. Working our way down, more Cypress Green on our mirror caps, so nice color match. You get a little bit of chrome finish. We got some bright, shiny metal work only on the bottom. Just to balance it out, you know, we're trying to balance this midsize ship around. You do have color matched on the door handles. Love the way there's no flat black on the bottom. 
That's another reason why those fenders need to be painted pronto. I like the sparkling aluminum finish for the roof rails. You could get your crossbars, get your cargo basket up there, your mountain bike holder. Maybe if you, if you have the neighbor's kid, you're taking him on your next family trip and you don't want him inside because he likes to pass gas a lot, you could put him in the cargo basket and strap him up, strap him up there for the whole trip. Working your way towards the rear, they do a great job on the quarter window. And yes, this is a three row midsize. So there is an extra row, which we'll showcase for you. Wrapping around the back, I'm digging it. You do have a very attractive looking spoiler, long roof spoiler, painted cypress green with the shark fin antenna. The one thing I'm not digging is get rid of this. Put that underneath there. They do it on their Lexus products. It would just clean up the back end. So we are gonna zonk that. But definitely loving the taillights, just like the headlights, they do a great job. The Highlander badge, we got limited. And guess what? Get ready to grip the road, just like my Pumas. We got limited all-wheel drive. So we got power going to all four wheels. And then working our way all the way down. I wish that they would just give me a nice exhaust finisher on each side. But I do like this metallic dark gray finish. But why don't we go ahead because it's not about the outside, it's about the heart of the Highlander. Let's go see what's new. All right, guys, we do have the hood open. You do have a prop rod on the limited trim. I would like to see the hood struts instead. But underneath the hood is the big surprise. What are you looking at? First of all, you're looking at a tasteful engine cover. But underneath that engine cover is that 2.4 liter inline four turbocharged engine. So they got rid of the 3.5 liter V6 naturally aspirated and now we have turbocharged power before you go ahead and call the 1-800 i need to complain toyota phone number let's talk about numbers you're looking at 265 horsepower 310 pound feet of torque that's more torque than the v6 you're also looking at that eight speed automatic so you got the eight speed automatic with this setup getting power to all four wheels, you could tow up to 5,000 pounds. And here's where you're gonna be a big winner. MPGs, in the city, 21 miles per gallon, on the highway, 28 miles per gallon. And guess what? Combined, you're looking at 34 miles per gallon. And if you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, this is a midsize SUV with three rows. How could they do a turbo? They're not the first. Mazda with the CX-9 has had that 2.5 liter turbocharged engine for quite some time. But while we go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire this up and see how it goes. guys we're inside this 2023 cypress green interior of this 2023 highlander i know you're saying to yourself well joe i'm scared i'm scared about this review my whole life i've always driven suvs that had v6s never a four-cylinder and never one with a turbo especially a mid-size three-row how's it going to perform i can't wait to see but i'm curious about the price very good curiosity that you have. This being a limited trim, this having the Cypress Green, you're looking at an MSRP and all-wheel drive right around $50,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. So I like what they've done with the Highlander in this generation. Soft touch material. I'm not even minding that dark gray wood finish. It actually is very tasteful. You do have what they call that harvest beige color i'm not a big beige guy so something to think about but it definitely helps for filming purposes and it definitely spruces up what could be a very boring just black door panel now the door pocket is on the tighter side so maybe one nashville hot dog and a bottle of root beer to wash it down going from the door panel to the dash 
soft touch material. I do love the stitch work. We got the JBL sound system. I even like this flat gray finish because there's no fingerprints, no glare. A little bit of silver. We got the Baker's Dozen, baby. Baker's Dozen Twinkie tray. That's 13 Twinkies. Line them up. More soft touch. And then look what's all new for 2023. We got a 12.3 inch infotainment system that has Toyota's multimedia system. The new multimedia system first appeared in vehicles like the Tundra. Now it's on the Highlander. What I like about it is how intuitive it is to use and how quick it reacts. You push something, boom, it happens. Let me show you the cameras because this is another area where they really did some great work. Throw it into reverse. Look at the resolution. I could actually count all the leaves that have fallen from the trees. You got your trajectory, you got 360, and it's a cypress green one. They could have put white, they could have put silver, they could have put purple. They gave us a cypress green. Watch this, this is kind of cool. You could actually adjust the angles of everything, the lines. You could do crisscross pattern, but watch this. Put it in the park. Let's say you're at the mall and you want to get out, but you want to make sure you're not being stalked. Boom, you got that cool 360 display. It's going to go all the way around. Obviously, with the door open, passenger door open affects it a little bit, but really allows you that little Easter egg. You're inside an egg. You're about to be hatched with your Cypress Green Highlander. And there it is, looking great. And then look, you're right back where you started. AC controls, nice dual climate, nice switch gear. Feels like you're opening up a Swiss safe. I got three stages of heated seats. Don't want that but I do have three stages of ventilated seats. I love that. And then it's easy to shut off. You got real switches. You can go in the infotainment system, but why do it with the switch gear, AC vents, wireless charging, wireless, right there in that nice cubby. You could put a freaking iPad in there and it would fit. USB-Cs, USB-A, a 12 volt. I'm gonna miss, move this out of the way. I hope you like Musketeers because you could fit three, three Musketeers in there. That's a good day. Two cup holders, some more of that wood finish, and you know what? It actually hides the fingerprints really well, so I'm glad they didn't just do gloss black. This is going to control that eight-speed automatic, getting the power to the all-wheel drive. We do have our mode selector. I'll show you more of that when you come to the business end. Hill descent control. We even have our different mode selector for the all-wheel drive. Mud, sand, rock, and dirt, and then normal. But who the hell wants to be normal? We even got snowman mode. Who wants to build a snowman? Nice, soft material. I love the way they do this sliding Rolodex. There's your key fob. Toyota Highlander, in case you forgot what vehicle you bought. Oops, flip it around. Thankfully, it's very light and it doesn't break anything. We do have a little sliding uh, planters, honey roasted peanut tray. And then you do have enough room in there, I would say, for four nice big drumsticks, those fried hot, crispy Nashville wings and drumsticks. Really, really good. Put honey all over it. Hot, tasteful seats. Soft, perforated, the stitching. Are they power assist? Yes for the passenger. Yes for the driver. Slide this bad boy open. You got a standard size sunroof. No panoramic on a limited trim. Let me know how you feel about that for 50 Gs. Close it up. Come on over to the business end because I got one more new thing I want to show you in this Highlander. Hey guys, business time. You do have two memory seat settings. I do like the attractive Highlander sill plate that they have. Just a little bit really makes it go a long way. And then you got your seat controls. That's going to help you go a long distance as you're driving down the road. Six feet tall, just like any other Highlander. Plenty of room. Steering wheel, nice leather. Just ugh, this horn button. I want to uh, talk to whoever designs this. I would like it to match the steering wheel. Give me some stitching, give me some goodness. I do like the flat black on the buttons so you don't have to worry about fingerprints and it is a tilting and telescoping manual controls. And then there it is, that 12 inch digital gauge cluster, all new for 2023. Look at the modes, watch this. Look at that, there's your, there's your Highlander. So you got sport, eco, and normal. And then on top of that, we have of course our other controls for the all-wheel drive system and everything. So really nice display, really clear, and how the setup is on it and all the other information within the gauges 
The one thing that's missing on the Limited is a head-up display, but why don't we go ahead, let's check out the mid-row and the third row to see if your passengers are gonna enjoy this Highlander. Hi guys, mid-row and third row time in the Highlander. What's nice is, is you're getting great space just like previous years with the new tech and the new engine. Backs of the seat, soft touch material, nice large pockets. You can easily fill this up with at least four biscuits and just dump the gravy in there. Command center, you got a nice rear AC set up here where you can adjust the temperature and blower fan speed. Down below, we got two USB-Cs and a home power source so everybody can stay connected. We do have, of course, seats that recline and of course, seats that actually slide, if I could find where you do it. Oh, here it is. It's like a ride at Walt Disney World. And then you're right back. Now, captain's chairs, the armrests, you know what? They're actually not too bad. I'm not gonna zonk it. I would like it to just be a little bit wider, but not too bad. You got a little center here for some nachos and a couple super big gulps way down in there in between the seats. And then, of course, the third row, I'm not getting back there today, but there's your third row. You definitely want to be on the smaller side. And if you want to see a more in-depth review of the third row and some of the other components, I'll leave it at the end of this one. But let's go ahead and get in the cargo area because I want to go on throttle. Yeah, it's cargo time, real simple. Hit the button, nice electric assist, and guess what you're going to be greeted to for 2023? 16 cubic feet of space. With the third row up, you got that JBL subwoofer on the driver's side, giving you the beats while you're listening to your music. And then you have that versatility of this great space. Now the good news is, watch this. We lift up on this guy, look at the storage. I could easily put 3,685 Skittles, individual Skittles in this place. How do I know? We actually did it and then we ate them. Sorry. And then, now I'm sure you're saying, well, Joe, put down the third row. We want to see more. Real simple. We don't need to make it complicated. Look at that. It like knew that I was putting the seat down. It read my mind. 60-40 split. 60% is down. What does that leave us with, kids? 40%. Nice and flat. You'll notice the little cup holders in that third row. Nothing too comfy, but they're there. And, of course, you have that now flexibility. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, how much room is that? You're looking at 48.4 cubic feet of space. You fold down the mid-row, 84.3 cubic feet of space. But you know what? The newest thing that I know you want to find out about is the engine. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle with the new 2.4 liter in this highway. All right, guys, we're inside this Cypress Green 2023 Toyota Highlander Limited. And uh, right off the bat, I gotta go on throttle. Nobody's behind us, so I'm gonna come to a complete stop on throttle. You're definitely feeling the extra torque from the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. And guess what? You know, we've driven the RX 350, we've driven the NX, it really, falls into that same alignment. I think that when you get behind the wheel, it's gonna surprise you. Now, one thing you can't get around is that the engine is a little bit noisier. Being a four cylinder, it is a little noisier, but you're still getting same great shifts from the eight speed automatic. And with our particular one, we have the all wheel drive. All right, guys, pulling away. I do like the sensitivity of the throttle. And then another thing, just like before, the all-wheel drive system really helps keep you planted, but being in sport mode and definitely you could feel that nice torque delivery and you're not waiting for the boost to kick in. It really comes in low through the rev range. Also new, that digital gauge cluster. I think that helps put the Highlander almost on another level now because of how great that information is. And then you have the new multimedia system with that 12.3 inch. Everything else is well laid out. Toyota definitely hits the nail on the head with layout of all the switch gear. And that makes it very easy to, uh, to get settled in while you're driving. But as you can see, even in sport mode, the revs are around, I would say 2300 RPM. 
as we're doing 60 miles an hour. I'll drop it into normal. You see the cool graphic comes up and then you could actually feel the change between how the engine, the transmission and everything is behaving. Now we're turning, I would say around 1500 RPM. So quite a difference, that's for sure. Up, oh, need to make sure I stay straight. I thought I was supposed to make a right hand turn. But I'm going to slow down just a little bit. We're going to go on throttle in normal mode. And this time I'm going to do it from a roll on throttle. So it drops down and we're off. So like I was saying, still nice shifts from that eight speed automatic and being in normal mode wasn't as snappy, but if you want, to be more snappy, you go into sport. And that's usually how every time I get into a vehicle, I put it in that sport mode if it has it available. But definitely, like I said, instrumentation, I'm missing a head up display and a panoramic sunroof, especially at $50,000. But what I'm not really missing, to be honest with you, is the V6. Uh, I thought I would miss it more, but like I said, this engine is in the RX. Mazda with the CX-9 has had a 2.5 liter inline four turbocharged engine for years. I never was wanting for more power. And the way that the tuning is now, it really allows you to get a more meaty torque delivery rather than waiting for the, you know, to hit 6,000 RPM. All right, well, guys, I want to go a little bit more on throttle to show you this uh, 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. We're in sport mode, nobody's behind us, and we're going to go on throttle. Oh, throttle, here we go. Look at that, look how responsive it is. But it's gonna be interesting to see as more people get behind the wheel of these new Highlanders, what you think about the uh, 2.4. Look at this decreasing radius turn, coming out of the turn on oh, throttle. And one thing for sure that you'll notice with this is that we're not lacking for grip. We got the stick that we want because this one does have the all-wheel drive. And yes, you could still get your Highlander all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, hybrid, and this new 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. The hybrid has no changes to the engine. So that's still gonna be that same four-cylinder with the um, electric motor setup, whereas this is the one that's different. All right, guys, one more time for me, definitely one more time for you. We're gonna go on throttle, sport mode. On throttle, here we go. Into this right-hand bend, and what's nice about this Highlander too is you notice I'm on this very, very tight country road, and I still feel comfortable. The dimensions of this vehicle is great, and the way the suspension works and everything else really allows me to feel confident uh, while I'm going through this tight, twisty bit section. But even going over this little bump here where this bridge is, voila, smooth, controlled, composed. Those are really important words, very important adjectives. And then I love this turn here, man. This thing is a ton of fun. Power out, on throttle. So hopefully this has been a good overall review of the Highlander. We're going to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. Right, guys, it's been one of those Nashville boot kicking kind of days here in Tennessee. I definitely want to thank the whole Toyota media team for getting us access to this new Cypress Green Toyota Highlander Limited with the four banger turbocharged engine. Let me know what you think. Did they go the right route? Are you happy with that choice? And do you think that this is better than the V6 or vice versa? Let me know in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to the real MVP. She puts up with a lot, including me. Give Lori some love in that comment section. Follow her on Instagram. It's real simple, at Lori Rady. You're going to love the pictures that she posts. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.